I want a miracle. Can you come to sing my song? And when I turned up, I see them here. I said, I asked for a miracle. But I was with them a few Sabbaths ago. The only church that has my name. You can call the name of their church without first calling my name. The Glen Devon Church. The Devon part of it is only by accident. The Glen part of it is by purpose. Are you listening to me? And so uh, uh, they're going to sing a song for me that I've grown to love. I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life he has been faithful. I don't know about you, but I said all my life he's been faithful. He's done stuff I never thought possible. He's been there when, when everything else seemed to be going haywire. And we go sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. And while they make sure that they get all the sounds together, so son, you make sure that you get the sound up right, because if you don't get the sound right today, there is some Isaac, there is Doyle's, there is Honeyguns, there is Price and Sons. You can pick your choice. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and in all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness Your voice, you have led me through the fire, and in darkest nights, you are close like no other. I know you as a father, I know you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness. Of God. Hey, all my life you have been faithful. Oh God, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh I will see of the goodness. God. Hey, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. But your goodness is running after. It's ready! 
Can you say amen? Can you clap your hands for joy? Can somebody say praise the Lord? Can you sing that chorus for me one more time? Can you sing it for me one more time? No, my life, yes. you have been faithful. I don't know about you. And all my life, you have been so good. So I will sing, oh, I will sing of, the goodness of the goodness of God. Of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, God, our Heavenly Father, on this the first day, of this new year, the beginning of the rest of our lives, we've come to testify. We've come to, to declare in the face of the devil that all our lives you have been faithful. Even in the midst of our unfaithfulness, you have been faithful. We've come through a year of grave challenges. Some of us have been wrapped tight in the velvet blanket of sorrow, but you have been faithful. Some of us have wet our pillows with liquid frustration, but you have been faithful. Some of us have been through pain. We've been through the valley and the shadow, but you have been faithful. And so today we declare all our lives you have been a faithful God. Great is your faithfulness. Oh God, our Father, now this wretched lump of sinful clay is neither worthy nor ready for the preaching that this moment requires. But I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ that you would wrap me in the bosom of your righteousness. Let the blood of Calvary one more time touch these sinful lips, this wretched being for the preaching that you want done. This moment needs more than a sinner can supply. And so allow your grace to sit down beside each of us. Let loose the Holy Ghost inside this place. Hold the devil in check. And if, oh God, there's anybody here tempted to be ungrateful, remind them that all their lives you have been faithful. We will testify of your goodness. If you would speak to us today, we would testify of your goodness. If you would convict our hearts of sin, but don't leave us in our sins, we would praise your name and testify of your goodness. If you would give the wind a mighty voice, that the thousands now listening and watching across the islands and the continents, some who have buried their loved ones, some whom you have recovered from COVID-19, brought them back from the brink of death. Some God whom the devil is trying now to take out, but you will be faithful to them too. And we'll lift our hearts in praise to you. Oh, blessed God, you've given to this moment that which we can't even fully fathom because somebody's salvation somewhere around the world depend on a word that you would send today. Hold the devil in check for the glory of your name. Speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. Amen. Can I read in your hearing? Two unrelated passages from two separate books of the Bible. I would quote them for you. The first one comes from the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 20. And you find it at, at two different 
areas in the book and I don't know why God picked them out but, but he said though now Job and Daniel were in the land though now Job and Daniel were in the land they, they should but deliver their own souls and the next text that's, that's unrelated comes from Psalm 33 and verse 12 when he says and, and I read for you blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Wouldn't it be wonderful if when we exited 2020 when we got to that sunset moment that all the troubles we encountered in 2020 would have been left behind wouldn't it be wonderful if when we got to the last hour of the last year entering on the edge of a brand new year and you say happy new year to, to your friend. Wouldn't it be wonderful if when you get to the end of the year, can I talk to you over here? Those over there are hard of hearing. Let me talk to you. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if when you get to that last moment that you were able to rejoice that, that all of the troubles of 2020 were left behind you. But I have some bad news for you. And I'm going to have to use a different microphone to tell you. I have some bad news for you. It's going to follow you. I have some bad news for you that some of the stuff we thought we would have gotten away from, you're going to discover that at somewhere in 2021, you'll bump into them. Some pain you thought you would have gotten rid of. Some trial you thought would have been left behind. You can wake up some morning. So let me ask you, when you say Happy New Year, what do you mean by it? When you tell your friend Happy New Year, is it a wish that your sorrows are left behind? Or is it a desire that the happiness you desire will now be yours to share? When you say Happy New Year, what comes in your mind? Can I ask you, I'm going somewhere today. I'm going, I'm going to hope that God will preach to us today. Think of the worst thing that happened to you in 2020. Think of the most difficult issue you had to deal with. Think of the most painful stuff with it physically, emotionally, or otherwise that you had to contend with. Think of that stuff that you couldn't even cry because your tears couldn't come. You couldn't feel. You, you couldn't hear anything. Your mind seemed to be blank, but you know it's, it's the stuff that you would have wished never happened. I just stop by to tell you while you're thinking about it, you can look the devil in his face and say, Happy New Year. Now, now, now I, I have to get you in there. I want you to look at the person you are social distancing from and look through your mask. Don't remove your mask and say, Happy New Year. I said, say it through your mask, say, Happy New Year. I want to walk today down through the road called P-R-A-C-T-I-C-A-L. I'm a practical person. I can't spell, but I hope that's how it's spelled. Our topic today is 
pandemic problems are purposeful praise. Pandemic problems are purposeful praise. Nobody thought, nobody knew when the first virus of this kind was discovered that it would have impacted the world it has but it never took God by surprise nobody thought so, so our text our text speaks to us so let me read the first one first and then tell you why God gave it to me and by the way it jumped in my mind I was sitting around there saying God you have to speak to me clearly because I can't preach unless the text speaks to me and that I sat in there preparing my mind on something else the text just jumped out at me it is Ezekiel 14 20 though now Job and Daniel were in the land now Job and Daniel what do they have in common preacher why in the world would you talk to us on the first Sabbath of the new year about now a drunkard Job and Daniel well I'm glad you ask so let me tell you the topic pandemic problems because we've had some problems in this pandemic year that has been unusual and sometimes unfamiliar but most times in the depths of their grueling nature troublesome but God wants you to know that if the Lord is your God you are a blessed person Lord, I'm in the wrong place. Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. You have to understand the context of the, the, the speaker in our text. He is familiar with strange gods. He is familiar with generations who prefer a God with eyes that can't see and ears that can't hear and hands that can't touch and feet that can't walk because a God like that is accommodative to all our stuff but David said the only God who can help is a God who will convict you a God who will convert you but a God who loves you enough not to leave you broken blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord and the last part of the text says the last part says and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance I love the word inheritance my great grandmother died at 99 years, almost 100. And I tell you this, I would run through, run my hand through her silver hair, and I can't forget her closing words. I wasn't there when she died, and she always said, Boy, you travel so often, you're going to let me die, and you're not here. I said, You don't make that mistake. But she died when I wasn't in the room. But here's what I remember. She, she said a parable to me. Then it was a parable. She, she said, boy, I have you on my mind. I have you on my mind. And I discovered after she was dead that the little piece of land on which the old family house was was for her little grandson. Well, God says... Because I am your God, I have an inheritance. I have chosen you for an inheritance. Dear the devil in hell, you can say happy new year. Because when God writes your name on the will, he did not leave it up just to you to make sure that you hold his hand. Because he knows you can't hold his hands when trouble comes. You can't hold his hand in the midst of your pain and distress. But the Bible said, he that keepeth Israel. And I hear the rastaman said, Jah is my keeper. Are you listening to me? He 
is the keeper and he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep I'll tell the devil happy new year for the Lord is good happy new year devil take it devil happy new year blessed is the people whose God is the Lord now I have to go to Genesis to help you understand the critical issue when your God is the Lord because you see COVID-19 and teenage Holy Ghost help the preacher I want to say something but I need to drink something first I was a teenager. My daughters don't believe that. <laughs> but it's true, babies. I was a teenager. Wonder where he's going, Lord. I'm glad you ask. We talk about Gen Zers, this complex generation born in an age of technology tempered by the challenges of a godless society we talk about gen x's and gen y's the older ones and 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 we talk about the gen z's but but this old man has learned a lesson that there is nothing new under this s-u-n there has no temptation taken what there's nothing new so hear me gen z's the challenges you face are stuff that others have faced before you got here listen to me carefully the issues you face teenage stuff when you have more energy than you have sense the stuff you face in courtship when you when you make the wrong decision all because you were fevered by passion in a sex crazy age when you thought that it was your life and you're big enough to do what you think you should do and then you discover you are in a mess hear the preacher why am i taking you there because you see God understands teenagers. Listen to me. It's not just a teenage problem. They are grown folk who still make a mess of their lives. They are grown folk nearing a hundred. Because we've never got... Mm, I didn't plan to read it yet. But there's something here. Right in the same chapter. Verse 12 said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Verse 16 said, There is no king saved by the multitude of his host there is no mighty man who is delivered by much strength are you listening to me and as you read the text the text is saying you'll have some issues in 2021 that an army can't protect you from the jdf can't help you from the jcf can't help you from you'll have some issues in 2021 that your intellect and your learning and your physical stuff and your macho stuff and your feminine charm can save you from but he said bless said is that nation whose God is the Lord well preacher what does that mean I'm glad you asked me hear me carefully when he wanted to make a world before he made you he stepped out on the balcony of nothing with nothing beside him and nothing to his left and nothing before him and nothing behind him and nothing above him and nothing below him and he spoke to nothing he said let there be light and a blazing ball of fire called the sun appeared and he called the earth from the bosom of darkness why do i still preach the seventh day sabbath because it says to me that god my god who is the lord is the sovereign creator who made everything the hebrew said he formed the earth ex nihilo he made it from nothing where are you going preacher i'm glad you ask in this new year when covid 19 
19 shuts down your business and shut down your health and shut down your family and you discover you may have to die all by yourself blessed is that person whose God is the Lord he made the world from nothing so what happened when the devil shuts down your business and you can't pay the rent and you can't buy the food and you can't pay the mortgage blessed is that people whose God is the Lord if he could have made the world from nothing as long as your hand is in the hand of that God you can't say happy new year devil happy new year the Lord is good and I will testify I will testify I will sing of the goodness of God but he said he has chosen you for an inheritance and this is where I link my unrelated and almost unlinkable text Ezekiel 14 20 though now Daniel and Job were in the land as I live saith the Lord God they shall only deliver their own souls. So the preacher is making his first point that he doesn't want you to forget. It is simply this. In the midst of pandemic problems, you can have purposeful praise when you purpose in your heart that nobody else can connect with God for you, you've got to have your own connection. Listen to me carefully. I watched on CNN screen and I see screaming faces of daughters whose loving parent was behind a glass cage in a nursing home dying but they died alone listen to me carefully if you're going to successfully face and live in a world where virus will cause you to be social distance from others you can't be social distance from God though now I believe now I must have had brothers I believe he must have had cousins. He never just had a wife and sons and their wives. The question is, what happened to the rest of Noah's family? What happened to the rest of Noah's generation? He knew, he knew that the matter of connection with God is an individual responsibility and though he was present what heartbroken stuff when God shuts the door of the ark and his loved ones his good friends his partners hear me carefully the ark was not just built by Noah and his three sons many of those who helped to build the ark allow the ark to sail without them because they never had an individual connection though now so we can understand him but job why does the text include him in pandemic problems you're going to have some times to live with what you know god can fix what do you do when God does not answer your prayer the way you prayed them? What do you do when God makes you live with what you know God can change? I hear you, I hear you. So let me take you to Job. In the first chapter, in the first chapter, one day, now the brother is better than I by a thousand, a million times. I don't know how I'd handle it if faith hope and charity 
should all die the same year, let alone the same day, let alone the same hour. So he's at his house and here comes somebody running. The enemies came and they took away the, the, the animals. They took, and, and one by one, all the animals, watch me. The devil took, first of all, his material things. But it didn't shake Job's faith. He had an inheritance in God. Listen to me carefully. I take a practical word to you. And when he thought that the worst could have happened, had already happened, he had lost all his assets, all his animals, oxen, sheep, goat, all gone. When he thought the worst was past, here comes the next news. An east wind came from God, blow down the house where your children were having a birthday party and they are all dead. What do you do when God fail or refuse or for some reason does not prevent what you hope he would have because you know he could have. Pandemic problems, the loss of your business, the loss of your health, the loss of your friends, pandemic problems. You can still have a praise, but it has got to be a purposeful praise. You have to purpose in your heart that you value the giver of gifts more than the gifts he gives you. You've got to purpose in your heart in this 2021 20, year that you value a relationship with God more than you value the gifts of God. There are so many of us who allow the things by which we live to become the reason for which we live. And because we are so attached to things, because we are so attached to our material stuff, because we are so attached to the gifts that God has given, ignoring God, he allows COVID-19 to shut down the business and shut down the world and shut down nightclubs and shut down the stuff you think you couldn't live without. Then he said, pay me some attention. I'm here. I'm here. Pandemic problems. But if the Lord is your God, you can still shout Happy New Year when yours is a Purposeful praise. Job, look at the first chapter. He lost the children, he lost the animals, and the brother at the end of the chapter, Job 1 27 28, he said, The Lord gave. Now no, hold, hush your fuss. He said, Naked came I. Out of my mother's womb, I came into this life naked. I came into pandemic problems, empty-handed. The Lord bless me. Sometimes, sometimes, oh, Holy Ghost, help the preacher. Sometimes when we have nothing, we are more praising, more loving, more church attending, more committed, more dedicated when we were down and out. But the more God blesses us, the less we praise him. Are you listening to me? But God used Job to say something to you and to say something to me. That there are those who claim him as their God. 
who even when they don't understand why he permits some stuff, they're going to still trust him. So he said, the Lord gave and the Lord takes away. Blessed be his name. And the devil goes back to God. The devil goes back to God. And the devil said to God, a man will give everything he has for his life. Permit me, oh Lord, I'm walking slowly through the sermon. Well, I said to you that if you're going to succeed in 2021, if you're going to have a purposeful praise, you have to have a personal connection with God for yourself. So God said to the devil, I give you permission to touch everything he has. You can even touch his body, but his life is in my hands. And that's one more reason you can tell the devil, Happy New Year. You can say it with meaning because your life is in God's hands. Oh, you don't understand it. There's sometimes some folk who you work with, they think your life is in their hands. Your life is in God's hand. Are you listening to me? I said, your life is in God's hands. But the devil knows how to bait the hook to match the taste of the fish. So he comes by and he surrounds Job with some church people. I said he surrounds Job with some church people. Can you understand me that sometimes you have more hell with church people than you have with people? <laughs> he surrounds Job with some church people. And the church folks said, from all our years in this church, we've never seen anybody who suffered like you. You must be a great sinner. It's just that you're hiding your sin. Confess them! Day after day. And he sat there in his grief. He knew. He searched his heart. And he couldn't identify why all of this was happening to him. And day after day, his miserable counselors And he got to the place where they said to him, God is punishing you in your pandemic problems. You know what he said? Got to look at Job 19. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Happy New Year! Let him take my stuff. Let him take my health. He sat in the ashes. He is scraping his stuff. The bot brother is decomposing. His flesh is dying. His flesh is rotting. While his mind is still alert. The devil is a worthless criminal. And his wife came and said, I can't stand to see you like this. I'd rather you curse God. God and let him kill you and the brother said though after my skin worms destroy this flesh yet in my flesh I shall see God for myself in the midst of pandemic problems you can have a purposeful praise when your tears are falling when your flesh is rotting and you can't stand to look at yourself in the mirror. In the midst of pandemic problems. So what if COVID-19 never goes away? I can still sing, this is my father's world. What if the pain never goes? What if healing never comes? I'm not done. I wish I could go a little further, Joe, but let me run. My time is gone. I look up there, and they made a mistake. I see time's up, but, 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 but hear the preacher. Daniel, as a Bible reader, I know all of us have sinned, but I've searched my Bible several times to find a biblically revealed flaw with Daniel. I could find it easily with David, I could find it with Nawal. At one point, Job began to complain 
And God had to come down and said, gird up your loins like a man and let's talk man to man. But Daniel, Daniel, I searched all over and I couldn't find any. But here's what struck me. God sent him a prophecy that would outline the future of the world to give you hope and to give me hope. But he couldn't understand it. And God knew he couldn't understand it. And the same day he began praying, God dispatched Gabriel from around the throne to go and give Daniel some understanding. And the Bible said, 21 days after was when Gabriel turned up. You know what Gabriel said to Daniel? Gabriel said, Daniel, the moment you start praying, God heard you. But the prince of darkness withstood me for 21 days. But Michael came and I'm come to help you. What do you do in the midst of pandemic problems when God does not answer your prayer immediately at the time you pray? You're searching for the job and you see others less qualified get the promotion that you thought you'd have gotten. You've done your best at your job and others get past you and you're praying and you're praying. What do you do when God does not answer your prayer the moment you pray them? Mighty Gabriel, 21 days. But Daniel kept praying. 21 days. My heart is encouraged that Michael came to do battle. So Gabriel came and said, Daniel, the delay does not mean a denial. Your blessings may be delayed, but if the Lord is your God, your blessing can't be denied. I'm going to say it again. I said your blessing may be delayed, but if the Lord is your God, he has chosen you for an inheritance. It may not come can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? What did Mary and Martha say to Jesus? They said to Jesus, Lord, we can't understand you. You love us. You said you love us. We said to you that Lazarus, the one whom you love, was sick. And now he's not just dead. He is stiff stone dead. And he can't get any deader than that. He's decomposing. Mary and Martha in pandemic problem said to Jesus, if you were here, he would not have died. And Jesus said, if you can believe, if you believe that my presence could prevent death, you must also believe that my power can restore life. If you believe that my presence could prevent death, then no matter what COVID takes from you, my power can restore that which you've lost. So Job got back twice as many donkeys, twice as many sheep, twice as many cows, twice as many goats because if you can hold on if the Lord is your God he will give you double for your trouble in pandemic problems you've got to have a purposeful praise you've got to purpose in your mind that you're going to praise him even when your tears are falling you're going to praise him when your pocket is empty you go somebody I, I, I said it over and over my wife is the best math teacher the world has ever seen and she sent me to her school to pick up some stuff I talk about it several times and the lady looked at me from head to toe, from head to toe. 
And then I walked over and touched her hand. And when I touched her hand, she said, Papa Jesus, I'm a real somebody. For those who are watching from lands where you don't have that colorful language, she said, Lord Jesus, he's a real person. And she said, as we talked, you don't know what it is to have hard times. You don't know what it is to have problems. Well, let me tell you what I know. I'm driving down Spurtree Hill. I have two girls in overseas university whose school fees are paid in US dollars. One is being helped by the organization. The other is my full responsibility. Her fees were due. I'm coming down the corner. I'm saying, God, you've got to make a way. And preacher, though I am, there are times when doubts come as to whether or not you go make it through. And in the midst of my pandemic problems, my cell phone rang. And a family friend who lives in New York asked me a strange question. Do you have a U.S. account? Do you have a U.S. account? I said, yes. She said, can you give me the account? I said, why? She said, don't ask me any question. Just give me the account. You just crossed my mind. And I felt like sending you 3,000 US dollars. But I know your pride, so let me tell you, pay me when you can. I don't want it back, but I know you have your pride, so pay me back when you can. In pandemic problems, Blessed is that people. Blessed is that people. Blessed is that people whose God is the Lord. The Prince of Persia may block your prayer, but he can't deny it. For there's somebody at the mercy seat who stamped a blessing in heaven with your name on it and there's no power in hell that can block it I said God stamped a blessing at the mercy seat it is custom made it is custom built it has your name on it it is stamped by the blood of Jesus Christ you won't get it by your righteousness but you get it because the one at the mercy seat is your redemption I'm almost done and if it appears as if I'm ignoring the clock yes I am hear the preacher he said though Nawa Job and Daniel were in the land listen to me carefully to make it successfully don't get up yet son to make it successfully through 2021 you've got to have a purposeful praise you have to purpose in your heart that even though death and hell and problems are all around you you go hold to God's unchanging hand and when you find that your hand is slipping just cry out Jesus take my hand and hold on to me because I'm too weak to hold on to you when pain has caused you when pandemic problems cause you I say you used to be faithful I know what problems can do problems can make you throw away your commitment problems can make you throw down that which you once delight in I know the devil will come and problems on the right you'll throw down your witnessing you'll throw down your preaching you'll throw down your commitment you'll throw down your joy you'll throw away you'll throw away like Jeremiah you'll say God I'll never again preach in your name like Jeremiah in the midst of problems you'll say God I'll never I'll never when your tears are falling and you can't understand why God isn't doing anything. You're tired of crying over pain. You're tired of watching cancer kill your son. 
You're tired of watching the devil do his worst. And you throw down the stuff, the joy. You've thrown down singing in the choir. You've thrown down witnessing. You've thrown down the stuff that used to give you joy. Because you can't understand in the midst of your pandemic problems, you've lost your purposeful praise. But I hear Paul. I hear Paul in a text that at one time I struggle with. It's Romans 8.28. It's Romans 8.28. And I wonder who would write that foolishness? Who would write the stuff? Who in their right mind would write a text like that? Surely it has to be somebody whose heart did no pain. Whose mind was never contorted in anguish unspeakable. Surely it must be somebody who never experienced pandemic problems. Who would write a text like this? That all things work together for good to them that love God. Who would write a text like this? When your heart is aching in anguish unspeakable. When you wet your pillow. When the sun comes up. But you still are surrounded by darkness. When like Jacob your song is darkness be over me my rest a stone you must have read Bob Marley's song cold ground is my bed and rock stone is my pillow and you've thrown it down but Paul never stopped there Lord have mercy I didn't plan to but but I gotta find it I gotta find it help me help me find help me find help me find second Corinthians help me find sec well I, I have to just read it since I can't find it second Corinthians chapter 12 7 through 9 he said I went to God because of a thorn in my flesh have you ever wondered why is it the Bible did not explain what the thorn is we speculate but God has a good reason. The text has to speak to us. Because your thorn is not mine. And my thorn is not yours. And maybe, maybe if the text had explained what, what, what Paul's thorn was, you would say, well, God can't help me. All he said, he said that it was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet me. Have you ever been surrounded by a messenger of Satan? before you start thinking of other people sometimes it's self sometimes it's within we struggle with internal stuff and external stuff I know that some it will seem sometime to me that some people come to church just to make sure you don't get to heaven but if you allow it to happen it'll be your fault so Paul said 2 Corinthians 9 in verse 7, he talks about the thorn in his flesh. The messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. In verse 8, he said three times, three times I went to God and I asked God, deliver me from this stuff. Don't you know? Don't you know? Sometimes God allows some problems to stay in your life to keep you on your knees. But in verse 9, God answered. Paul said, he answered me by saying, my grace is sufficient to keep you. My grace is sufficient to keep you. If you're wondering how you're going to go through 2021, you've got pain. Maybe they are screws and irons and stuff pinning your bones together and you're facing pain night and day and you're wondering how you're going to go through this well I'm going to close the sermon and tell you how let me start with Paul he said he said God's grace and after he said that I'm going to read something for you after he said that jump with me quickly I'm running the clothes fast I'm going down to Romans I'm going to Romans chapter 8 oh Holy Ghost help the preacher I'm going fast Romans 8 35 who shall separate us if his grace is sufficient if the Lord is your God if you are chosen for God's inheritance who shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus he said he said and I read it for you 
shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword he said no he said for I am persuaded I have a purposeful praise my heart is fixed my mind is settled I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus I don't know I said I don't know I don't know what your trial will be I don't know what awaits you in this new year but I still tell you you can say happy new year for the sovereign creator the one who made the world from nothing the one who made the world in six days and blessed the seventh day as a mark of remembering him as sovereign creator he said his grace is sufficient so you can pick up the Bible and believe again you can pick up your song and sing again you can pick up your praise and rejoice again but let me throw them down the devil said I won't get you in January so you pick up January you say God I'm going to walk with you in January. I'm going to have purposeful praise. But watch this. When the devil took Job's children and his animals, at the end of the first chapter, Job still praised God. But by the time you get down to the end of the book, you discover all that the devil needs to do is to keep hitting you in the same place where it hurts. But if God was good in January, He's also good in February. Are you listening to me? If he's good in February, he's also good in March. So pick up your praise and march on with Jesus. If he's good in March, he's also good in April. Are you listening to me? Because his name is Jehovah Chire. If he's good in April, he's also good in May. And there's no maybe about the power of the living God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life in January and February and March and April and May and June and July and August and September and October and November and December all my life he has been faithful I will testify in January and February and March and April and May and June and July and August and September and October and November and when December comes I'll still say happy new year I will sing of the goodness of Jesus. But you say, preacher, tell me more. I began with David in Psalm 33. I go in with David in Psalm 23. So we failed him. We've been broken into pieces. See lightning flashing and thunder roll. And there are times when we almost let go. Never thought would face life anymore. We look back on 2020 ashamed of the past perplexed by the present afraid of the future but Jason Crabb has a song that speaks to us and before we get to that song before we get to that Jason Crabb song with the Hebrew brothers I had planned in my mind to read from Psalm 23 verse 1 
but I'll just go to the end of the chapter. You ask me, preacher, how can I pick up back my praise? How can I pick up back my witnessing? How can I pick up back my caring? When some of the folk you care for are the ones who pat you in the back when they are before your face and stab you in the eye when they are behind your back, but pick up your praise and rejoice. Why, preacher? Because I hear David said in Psalm 23, as he talks about the good shepherd, he comes to the end. He said, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. I'm going to ask my girls to help me close the sermon. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. So if you have some faith, God will give you some hope. I said, if you have some faith, God will give you some hope. And though you're struggling, he said, goodness and mercy will follow you. If you have faith and hope, goodness and mercy will follow you. Across the stage of life, goodness and mercy will follow you. Sometimes you're down in the valley, but goodness and mercy will follow you. Sometimes the journey seems long, but goodness and mercy will follow you. You can say happy new year because goodness and mercy will follow you. If you've got some faith, he'll keep your hope alive. If you've got some faith, he'll keep your hope alive. So goodness and mercy, will, and when you stumble down, goodness and mercy will get up with you. Are you listening to me? You've got some mountains to climb. You can climb higher and higher and higher because goodness and mercy following you all the days of your life. I said goodness and mercy will follow you. When they were born, my wife and I chose, well, she'll tell you I chose their names. A pound and a half at birth. Two and a half pounds. Doctors said they wouldn't make it. Almost three months in the incubator with tubes in their hands and tubes in their feet and tubes all over. Complete blood transfusion. I walked in there and I saw taped over the glass that contained these two tiny things. F-A-I-T-H and H-O-P-E. Written there, not by me, but by the two doctors. Dr. David Brown and Dr. Sharp. They said, it's only faith and hope that will keep them alive. I don't care what the devil will throw at you. If God has to take you in his incubator, mercy will write faith and hope. I said mercy will write faith and hope over your life, over your name. But you have to have a purposeful praise in the midst of pandemic problems. They go sing that Jason Crab. What's the song, son? Hmm? He'll make a way in the middle of nowhere. Can I tell you? Can I testify? Faith and hope may get married and leave me alone. But blessed is that man whose God is the Lord. I said they may get married and leave me alone. And if they do ever leave me alone. And I'm standing all by myself. When they're gone off the stage. And gone on to their honeymoon. And gone on to their life somewhere. I have one text to read for you. It's Isaiah 54 and verse 10. The mountains will depart and the hills be removed. But my loving kindness, I will never.
take from you. He'll make a way. Looking for answers. He'll make a way. You need a way out. He'll make a way. You've been trapped in that trial. You're watching. Full of sorrow and doubt. You want God to make a way for you? Type it in the chat, Lord. Make a way for me. You want God to make a way for you? Type it in the chat room. God, make a way. Make a way. Yes. He said he break away. Turn on the mic, son. Turn the mic up. He'll make a way. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. Turn her mic up, son. Turn her mic up. When you feel no one really cares. He's there by your side. Yes, he is. He'll make a way. You've come through this year with faith and hope in the living God. You've come this far by faith. In the midst of pandemic problems, you need a purposeful praise. Yes. No place to go. Pharaoh is behind you. They'll soon overthrow. Try to overthrow you. Right out of nowhere. Yes. Hey, my march is strong. Hey, you come right on time. He said he rolled back the water. He'll make a way right on time. He'll make a way out again. Yes, sing the song. In the middle of nowhere. You can say happy new year. When you feel your body is aching in pain. Cancer seems to be doing its work. But God will make a way. He's right by your side. He'll make a way. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. When the devil is closing in. Don't give up, don't give in. He'll make a way. Oh, somebody ought to rejoice. You're watching. You're joining by Facebook or YouTube. And the devil tells you you're done for. Tell the devil he's a liar. I don't care how broken up you are. I don't care how intense the pain is. I don't care how hopeless the issue look. I just come out and tell you, he will make a way. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. Oh, he'll make a way. In the middle of nowhere. Don't give up, don't give in. He'll make a way. Young man, he'll make a way. Young lady, he'll make a way. In the brokenness of your issues, he'll make a way. He'll make a way. I know the time is gone but somebody watching somebody listening somewhere you've been brought to the edge of your rope you're sitting at the edge of hope bordering on being hopeless maybe you've come through 2020 upset with God because he didn't answer your prayer the time you prayed Upset with God because you know he could fix your issue, but he hasn't fixed it. And you don't know what to do when God makes you live with what you know God can change. 
on this, the first Sabbath of the new year, the beginning of the rest of your life, I've come to tell you, in the midst of pandemic problems, pick up your faith and believe in God again. Pick up your hymnal and rejoice again. Pick up your praise and sing again. Because he's able. He's able. I didn't come to preach a fancy sermon. I came to talk to real people facing real problems in the midst of a real world. When your doctors run out of answers. When your counselors run out of solutions and your body runs out of pain coping capacity, the preacher stops by to tell you he'll make a way in the middle of nowhere. He stops by to tell you he'll carry you through you're watching. Maybe only God knows the hurt you're carrying. Type it in the chat. God, you know my pain. Because if you can confess to him the faith that you know he knows it, your answer is already on the way. If all you can type is just one word, H-E-L-P If you can't put your problems into words Just cry out for help As they sing this last song Just type that word H-E-L-P When my friends all Forsake me I don't know what To do I I want you oh, we promise to begin to help me today in the things that to chart a new course do. for your life. So I'll trust him I want you to begin today for his first day or true to chart a new course. You cross your Jordan. Over Jordan. He'll help you cross your Jordan. He'll help you cross your mountains, Lord, your rivers, your lakes. He'll help you cross over on the, the challenge that has accompanied you from last year. You thought Lord, you could have left it behind. You thought you had left it behind you. But he'll help you cross over. He'll help you cross over. Lord, help me win those four souls that ring sing. You're in this auditorium. Satan and I'm going to ask you is busy like in acknowledgement of God's sovereign grace. In a demonstration of your faith souls that, that he can help you cross over I'm going to ask you to stand with me you're saying devil I'm crossing over would you stand with me as a testimony of your so faith in God you're facing the new year you're saying Lord help me cross over you're standing up a new chapter a new praise you're taking your Christian life to the next level by the grace of God. You're taking your hope to the next level. You're picking up your praise to the next level. You're picking up your rejoicing to the next level. You're saying, devil, if this is my last year, I'm going higher and higher and higher and higher because blessed is that man whose God is the Lord. Blessed is that woman Whose God is the Lord? Lord, 
the cross of the Lord. From the old year to the new. From the old challenges to new victory. You'll have your cross over. From besetting sin to hither yet unknown victory. He'll have your cross over. some countries are experiencing the second struggle with that newer and deadlier virus the grandchild of COVID-19 spreading faster deemed to be far more dangerous may even be resistant to the current vaccine a mutated vi virus. The Lord God declared that there'll be pestilence in diverse places. But blessed is that people whose God is the Lord. And I have come to tell you that he's still in the prayer hearing business. He's still in the soul saving business. Our Father and our God on this first day of the new year the first Sabbath in the new year a day you've blessed and sanctified and ask us to remember as a mark of your divine creatorship you've asked us to remember the Sabbath because you use that Lord as a memorial that if we can only remember that you made the world from nothing. That even if COVID and sin reduce our life to nothing, the best place to be is still in your hands. So we ask you, remold us for this new year. Fashion us again in your likeness. We ask you, God, won't you help us to close the door on yesterday? Because yesterday is past and gone. But tomorrow is forever. Would you help us in this moment to understand that if we place our lives in your hands, our health may leave us, but you will never leave. Our strength may leave us but you will never leave our money may leave us but you will never leave our family and friends may leave us but you will never 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 leave so we go through this new year we shout in the face of unknown issues Happy New Year. We shout in the face of devilish challenges. Happy New Year. We shout in the face of every besetting sin and every traumatic transgression. We shout in the face of whatever the devil will throw at us. We shout Happy New Year because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
we go from this place with a new lease on life we go from this place to sing of the goodness of God we go from this place God testifying all our lives you have been faithful even when we've been broken you've still been faithful when we're penniless you've been faithful when we are sick you've been faithful when we're on the theater table you've been faithful when the doctors don't know the answer all our lives you have been faithful we will sing of the goodness of God the Lord is good his mercy endureth to all generation help us to stand up to pick up our praise to pick up our love for you to pick up our faith and belief again to pick up our preaching to pick up our testifying the Lord is good hallelujah we go into this year placing our lives in your hand forgive our transgressions our iniquities and our sins and we praise your name that at the mercy seat there is still sufficient grace we praise your name that when we can't see your hand and we can't trace your plans we can trust your heart thank you for being a faithful God is our asking in Jesus name thank you for being a powerful God thank you for redemptive grace and sustaining power this is our asking in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. Whatever the devil throws at you, know that you're in God's hands. And so I read before coming to the pulpit some churches who want to join.